In today's video, I just want to take a quick journey down the road of metformin. This is one of the most commonly prescribed diabetes med medications in the U.S. And as you will hopefully see in today's video, there are a multitude of benefits of this medication, this repurposed medication, in benefiting patients with type 2 diabetes, all the way to its antiviral, antibacterial properties, and all the way to mTOR, which is the mammalian target of rapamycin, which Dr. Dane Newville did a, a video on a few weeks ago. I will put a link to that somewhere here on the screen. But let's get into metformin, why it has been repurposed for this anti-aging benefit, for its possible tumor suppression activity, and how it actually influences gut microbiome. What is metformin? Metformin was discovered by a plant, Galiga officinalis. I don't know if I'm saying that right. I'll put it on the screen here. So this medication essentially was plant-derived, and it has numerous health benefits to the body. This is a repurposed drug. Unfortunately, it's a generic drug. I don't think it's going to get a lot of press and a lot of attention because essentially, again, there's really not a lot of monetary gain in this medication. But let's get into the benefits of metformin. And at the end of this video, I'm going to share one other important aspect of this drug that I find absolutely fascinating, and it has to do with anti-aging. But let's first look at its benefits in type 2 diabetes, lowering blood sugar. Here we go. Understanding its mechanism of action. The initial or the original explanation of its mechanism of action was quite elusive as it pertains to lowering blood sugar. We really didn't know how this worked. And Metformin is interesting because it will not, the risk is very low in giving a diabetic patient hypoglycemia or, or lowering their blood glucose to a point where it becomes very problematic. Initial understanding of its mechanism of action was independent of pancreatic beta cells. What does this mean? Essentially, somebody that has poor functioning, maybe they don't even have uh, enough beta cells in their pancreas to produce enough insulin, that patient can still benefit from metformin and lowering blood sugar by inhibiting gluconeogenesis, basically the, the production of new sugar from the liver, dumping that and spilling that into the blood. That can be attenuated or, or downregulated. Uh, the initial proposal of uh, mechanism was to, again, reduce this new blood sugar that the liver was producing, uh, sometimes inappropriately, and feeding it into the bloodstream when it really didn't need to. It also reducing was reducing, thought of reducing uh, glucose absorption from the gastrointestinal tract. So slowing down the amount of carbs that are essentially coming from our GI tract into our bloodstream. Let's just take a moment to look at the side effects and some concerns with metformin. Uh, most commonly, patients are going to have GI symptoms. So as it lists here, you, you might have anorexia, just don't want to eat, quite frankly. You're so nauseous. Uh, vomiting, abdominal discomfort, diarrhea. I've had patients in the pharmacy complain of cramping as well. That's cramping, not crapping. Uh, three to five percent of patients do have persistent diarrhea. Uh, some other issues here, vitamin B12 deficiency can be seen with long-term utilization. So if you are on metformin, uh, you, your doctor, in my opinion, your provider should be monitoring your B12 level. It's a simple blood test that you can do or have done. Uh, there are some contradictions, contraindications to this medication renal disease, alcoholism, hepatic disease, chronic cardiopulmonary dysfunction. So again, this, this medication isn't for everybody. Um, so we do have to be aware of that. So there are some newly discovered 
benefits of metformin that I want to go through that are really important to understand. If you are taking metformin, I encourage you to take this or talk to your provider and splitting up this dose. I get the gut feeling that there is more to metformin to be discovered, but let's just look at these newly discovered benefits. There are specific groups of bacteria called Formicutes that ha are lower in type 2 diabetic patients compared to non-diabetics. There are associated lower le levels of proteobacteria in type 2 patients as well. The reason this is so important to understand is that bacteroidetes, well, they feed on fiber. And fibers fuel for bacteria. And so a lot of times in, unfortunately, a poor diet and that of diabetics, really a lot of patients in my opinion, especially in America, we just don't eat enough fiber. So we, don't, we are not eating enough fuel for good bacteria in our GI tract to thrive. The other issue here is where it says associated lower levels of proteobacteria can be found in type 2 diabetics. These proteobacteria, they, they are reduced by limiting the amount of saturated fat in the diet. So we want to reduce the amount of saturated fat and alcohol uh, to reduce these proteobacteria. The other issue is if, if we have too many of the proteobacteria phylum in our GI tract, that essentially, it's been associated with systemic inflammation, which just adds to the problem with, in my opinion, type 2 diabetes, metabolic disease. There is enough inflammation, and now we're seeing that these type 2 diabetics have gut dysbiosis. Here's where it gets interesting. There's recent studies that have been associated with Roseberia, a particular type of bacteria, butyrate producing bacteria was to be less abundant in type 2 diabetic patients. Why is this important? Butyrate is a short chain fatty acid that can help to essentially improve the integrity of the gastrointestinal tract and ultimately lead to lower blood glucose levels. The abundance of gram-negative bacteria, which can stimulate the immune system like TLR, which is, stands for toll-like receptors, was increased in type 2 diabetic patients. Again, why is this important? Toll-like receptors can be turned on by gluten, which causes more inflammation. So we have got in my opinion, a perfect storm brewing here with bad bacteria overgrowing in the GI tract. We've got an abundance of gram-negative bacteria that are turning on inflammatory switches. Type 2 diabetic patients overall have been associated with low bacterial diversity. Okay, now that we know that Here's where it gets good. Metformin, again, to repeat this, is a typically the first-line pharmacotherapy agent for type 2 diabetics. I have dispensed, in my 20 years as a pharmacist, thousands of these orders over the years in my traditional setting. This goes back before I was in compounding functional pharmacy. Metformin was dosed typically two three times a day for a lot of the diabetic patients that came to our pharmacy. Well, metformin has been shown to act primarily in the gut and alters the composition of gut microbiota. Studies have shown that metformin use has been associated with the increase of butyrate production. Metformin has been associated with the increase of propionate production. Why is this important? These are two short-chain fatty acids that are produced by good bacteria that metformin is upregulating. This is great. Also, metformin has been shown 
to improve or increase the levels of a particular strain of bacteria, Acromancia mucinophilia. Why do we care about this particular bug? Is that that particular bug, essentially what it does is it rebuilds the mucosal lining of the GI tract, which is what we want. The weaker mucosal lining, the better the chances, unfortunately, that we have leaky gut syndrome. And so oral metformin can actually be beneficial to the gut lining. I'm a nerd. I think this is amazing. This is so cool. Sorry about that. So here is a study that looked at that for your reference. All right. So what I talked about, if you've gotten this far in the video, is that here is something really fascinating about metformin. I love looking at these older drugs and repurposing them for a multitude of different things. Metformin, we're going to get into this in a couple of weeks with Dr. Dane Newville. He is going to give another talk, uh, have another video on rapamycin. Here is what I alluded to at the beginning of this video is that metformin, I think this is so fascinating, can inhibit the mTOR pathway. What's the mTOR pathway? It's mTOR stands for the mammalian target of rapamycin. Dr. Dane Newville did a, a quick introduction on rapamycin, which is another pharmaceutical that can be used in uh, basically uh, down-regulating cancer growth. And so metformin has been associated with down-regulating the activation of the mTOR receptor. And so this in turn can possibly, metformin can possibly be used to help lower uh, the risk of cancer growth. And essentially it can really or possibly be used as an anti-aging agent. So long story short, if you are somebody that is uh, considering metformin, I strongly would encourage you to talk to your doctor about its use. And, well, quite frankly, also diet, diet, diet. Look at ways to lower your blood sugar naturally by improving your diet and reducing the amount of carbohydrates that you're consuming. Consume the right amount of carbohydrates. And that overall can improve your blood glucose levels without even taking metformin at all. But there are some neat key benefits with metformin. I encourage you to look more into this yourself. And I will will do future videos on this fascinating old drug. Thanks for watching.